Now let's move on to the part of what is data imbalance and why data imbalance is an issue. Data is work like a fuel for machine learning algorithms. In the absence of good quality data sets, even the best algorithms struggle to produce good results. Data imbalance occurs when we have significant difference in the class distribution within our data set. The majority class dominates the training data and the model is biased towards learning its patterns more effectively. As a result, the minority class may be underrepresented in modest learning process. This limitation can lead to a poor performance and an inability to make accurate prediction for instances belonging to the minority class. If the data set is biased towards one class and an algorithm trained on the same data will be biased towards the same class. Let's visualize the data imbalance using a bar graph in which the red bar represents class 0 which is the majority class and the blue bar represents class 1 which is the minority class. As the number of samples belonging to the class 0 is comparatively higher than the class 1. Let's consider class 0 and class 1 as a red class and blue class for just simplification. Imagine we have a binary classification problem with two classes, red class and blue class. In a graph representation, here we plot the data points belonging to the red class as a red boxes and the data points belonging to the blue class as a blue boxes. Now let's proceed to train a machine learning model using this red and blue boxes. During training, the model is trained by sequentially feeding the red and blue boxes to our model to ensure learning from the both the classes. During our model training process, the model will learn from both red and blue boxes and aiming to understand the patterns and relationship associated with each class. Our model training process is going on. In our model, we have a lot more red boxes than the blue boxes. The red boxes cover most of the part of our model, while the blue boxes are relatively very few. This means that our model has been exposed to a lot more examples from the red class than the blue class. Because the model has seen mostly the red boxes, it might in favor of making prediction based on the red class. This can make it less accurate when it dealing with blue class examples, it, because it don't have much exposure to those examples. That means our machine learning model is biased towards class 0. Let's check another example. We have a data set consisting of 1000 cat images and 100 dog images. This significant difference in the number of samples between two classes reflects a data imbalance. In this case, cat class is the majority class with 1000 images while the dog class is the minority class with only 100 images. Let's train a image classification model with the help of this cat and dog images by sequentially passing it to our image classification model. Our model training process is going on. When training a image classification model on this imbalanced data set, the model may become biased towards the majority class, which is cat in this case. The model learning process will be predominantly influenced by the cat images while it potentially causing to struggle in accurately recognizing and classifying dog images. Once our model training process done, let's take a test cat image and pass it as an input to our trained model. The model's prediction will be ideally cat, since it has been biased towards the cat class during training. If the model correctly predicts this image as a cat, then it indicates that the model performing well on the majority class. However, when we test our model on a dog image, there might be some challenges due to data imbalance. Since the model has been exposed to significantly larger number of cat images during training, it may struggle to accurately classify dog image as a dog. As a result, there is a higher chance of incorrectly predicting dog image as a cat. Shortly, when we input a dog image and expect the output to be a dog, but the model bias towards the cat class it means that the model tends to incorrectly classify dog image as a cat. Consider a data set and its class-wise data distribution before undersampling. This blue circle represents 
examples belonging to the minority class and the red circles represent examples belonging to the majority class. Now let's see the class wise data distribution after undersampling. As you can see, the number of red circles has been reduced. As the random downsampling or undersampling involves randomly removing instances from the majority class until we have same number of instances as the minority class. Here you can see the examples belonging to the majority class and the minority class is same. There is a disadvantage of random undersampling or downsampling. As we are removing instances from the majority class, there is a chance of losing information from our data, which can negatively impact on our model's performance. Therefore, it is crucial to perform undersampling or downsampling very carefully. Consider a data set where red circles belong to the majority class and the blue circles belong to the minority class. This is the class wise data distribution before oversampling. Let's see the class wise data distribution after oversampling. Here you can see in oversampling the number of blue circles representing instances from the minority class is increased by randomly selecting and duplicating blue circles from the minority class. After oversampling, the number of blue circles are equal to the number of red circles. Now we have equal number of instances in both the classes, indicating better representation of our data. Now let's move on to the part of how random undersampling or downsampling works. Consider a scenario where we have a bunch of red boxes belonging to the majority class, which is class 0, and the total number of samples belonging to the majority class is 600. And the blue box representing the minority class, which is class 1, and the number of samples belonging to the minority class is 100. In order to balance our data set through downsampling, we can randomly select and remove instances from the minority class, that is, red boxes until we have desired number of examples that matches the number of examples in the minority class. This downsampling process aims to reduce the dominance of the majority class and create more balanced representation of our data set. Now you can see the total number of samples in both the classes is same, which is 100. Let's see how random oversampling or upsampling works. Certainly, consider a scenario where we have a bunch of red boxes representing majority class, which is class 0, and the blue boxes representing minority class, which is class 1. For example, suppose there are 100 data samples belonging to the blue boxes representing minority class, and 600 data samples belonging to the red boxes representing majority class. In order to balance our data set, we can randomly select and duplicate instances from the blue boxes, that is the minority class, until we have desired number of examples in the minority class, which is similar to the number of examples from the majority class. Now we can see the total number of examples in both the classes is same. There is a popular technique called resampling, which is specifically used to address the problem of data imbalance. There are two main types of resampling. First is upsampling or oversampling and the second is downsampling or undersampling. Upsampling or oversampling involves randomly duplicating existing instances or generating synthetic examples from the minority class. The ultimate goal is to create more balanced data set. Some commonly used oversampling techniques are random oversampling, SMOT, which is synthetic minority oversampling technique, ADASIN, which is adaptive synthetic sampling, and lastly, random oversampling using borderline SMOT, which is also an extension of SMOT. Undersampling involves reducing the number of instances in the majority class to match the number of instances in the minority class. Some commonly used undersampling techniques are Random undersampling, Tomic links, near miss, edited nearest neighbors, and lastly, the cluster based undersampling. In this tutorial, we will be focusing on random oversampling and random undersampling, and the remaining techniques will be covered in the another video. 
Now let's move on to the part of practical implementation of handling data imbalance using random over sampling and random under sampling. First of all, we are going to import all necessary libraries that we required. These are the libraries that we required for our practical implementation. Now load our data set. This is our data set. We are going to use a data set from Kaggle. It is about vehicle insurance data. Here you can see learning from imbalance insurance data. The data set have two classes. Class 0 contains 3,19,594 samples and class 1 contains 62,531 sample. With the help of this data set, we have to build a model that will predict whether a customer would be interested in vehicle insurance or not. With the help of this class wise data distribution, here you can see, we can able to understand our data is quietly imbalanced. So this is all about data. I will share the link of the data set in the video description as well as I will provide my Jupyter code notebook uh, link. So you'll be able to access my code as well. So let's move for forward. Our data set contain a ID column. It does not add any value to our models learning process. So first of all, remove it with the help of data.drop. So let's run this. Now you can see our ID column get removed. Now let's see the class wise distribution of our data. Here you can see class 0 contains 3,19,553 sample and class 1 contains 62,601 sample. Now with the help of bar plot you can also able to see the bar of class 0 is comparatively higher than that of class 1. So with the help of this, you can able to understand our data set is imbalance. Our data set contains multiple categorical variables like gender, vehicle age and vehicle damage. So first of all, we convert it into a number form with the help of label encoder. Label encoder is a part of SQLN library. So we import it from pre-processing. So with the help of label encoder, we transform our gender vehicle age and vehicle damage columns into a number form so let's run this let's see our data here you can see our gender column vehicle age and vehicle damage column now into a number form this is the artificial neural network that we are going to use for our training it contains five layers the hidden layers having activation function relu and some dropout operation and the last layer having activation function sigmoid we are going to use optimizer adam and the loss function binary cross entropy we are going to train our data on this model architecture and this is the function which we define for evaluating our model the measure underscore accuracy function we have to just pass actual prediction and the model's prediction it will return us a confusion matrix it only takes actual prediction and the model prediction and it also written a classification report in which we are able to get precision and recall for the particular models inference okay so let's run this now we are going to load our model architecture our data set contain some explanatory variables and one target variable our target variable is response here you can see this is our target variable response and the re uh, remaining columns are explanatory variables so we firstly segregate it explanatory variables are uh, from column 0 to column 10 and the uh, target variable is in uh, 10 column so we are going to split our data set into training and testing part training part contain 80 percent data set and testing part contain 20 percent data set because we have provide test size equals to 0.2 we also provide stratify equals to target variable so that our class wise distribution within the training and testing data set is equally distributed. Now let's run this cell. Now let's see the class wise data distribution of our training and testing data. Here you can see our training data contains this class wise distribution class 0 contains 2,55,642 sample and class 1 contains 50,081 sample. Similarly, 
in the testing data set we have 63,911 sample belongs to class 0 and 12,520 sample belong to class 1. Firstly, we are going to normalize our data, training data as well as testing data into a, a normal form with the help of MinMax Scalar. MinMax Scalar is a part of SQLite library. So, firstly, we import MinMax Scalar. After that, we transform our X train data and X test data into a normalized form. So let's run this cell. Now we are going to train our model with the help of this X train and Y train. We have provided batch size equals to 32 and the number of epochs is 5. Let's run this cell. The model's training process will take some time. So we will meet after 5th epoch. Here you can see our model's training process is done. We are going to use this model to take an inference on the testing data. You can see NN dot predict is taking an inference on the test data. The prediction will be a probability of that particular class. So we are going to round it off. So we'll get able to a binary number. So let's run this. After that, we are going to evaluate our model with the help of measure underscore accuracy function. So let's run this cell. Here you can see our model performing well on the class 0 than that of class 1 because the precision recall and F1 score for class 0 is quite good as compared to class 1. That's why we can say that our model get overfitted on class 0 because it performing well only on class 0. And number of, number of misclassified examples in case of class 1 is in higher in number. So we can say that when we train a imbalanced data, when we train a model on an imbalanced data, the model will performing totally worst. It will get overfitted to the majority class. To tackle this problem, we are going to use two methods, random oversampling and random undersampling. So let's move on to the first part, that is random undersampling. But before that, I have one note for you guys. I have seen many people who are performing balancing on both training and testing data. But this is not the right way to balance the data and evaluate your model. Because when we train uh, a balanced data and test on the uh, again balanced data, then this is not the right way to evaluate our model. So uh, we have to apply balancing techniques on the training data not on testing data balancing the testing data can give us an inaccurate results by balancing the training data we ensure that the models learn from fair and representative data the testing data should remain unchanged to evaluate our model performance accurately that's why we are going to not performing random under sampling on testing data we are going to perform random under sampling only on training part so before random under sampling, we split our data set into training and testing. For that, we segregate explanatory variables and our target variable. And with the help of train test split, we split our data set into 80% and 20%. 20% is our testing data set. So let's run this cell. After that, we are going to segregate our training data into a majority and minority class. For that we have, we have to firstly concat our x train and y train because x train contain all explanatory variables and y train contain our target variable. So df underscore majority having the majority class that is class 0 and the df underscore minority having the samples belong to the minority class that is class 1. After that we are going to resample the majority class or downsample it up to the length of number of minority examples the length of df underscore minority is total number of examples belonging to the minority class so we'll down sample our majority class to the number of samples belonging to the minority class so let's run this cell now we are going to concat the down sampled majority class examples and the original minority class examples let's see the class wise data distribution in our uh, downsampled data here we can see class 1 and class 0 contain 
same number of samples. Now we are going to again segregate the explanatory variables and our target variable. Here is x train is our all explanatory variables and y train is our target variable. So let's run this cell. Again, we are going to normalize our data with the help of min max scalar. Now we are going to train our model with the help of this down sample data. This data contains same number of samples belonging to the both class. And now we are going to train our model on the balance data. So let's run this cell. We are going to use batch size is around 32, which is same as previous and number of epochs is 5. So this training process will take some time. So we'll meet after fifth epoch. Our model training process is done. Now we are going to take an inference on the testing data with the help of this model. So let's run this cell. Now we are going to evaluate our model with the help of measure underscore accuracy function. Here you can see after balancing our data, our model performed well on the class one as well. And number of misclassified examples get reduced for in case of class one. And also the precision recall and F1 score for both the classes are quite good. So we can say that after random under sampling, our model perform well on the both the classes. It not biased towards any class. It is totally generalized model. Now we are going to move on the next technique that is random over sampling. We are going to do same thing in case of random over sampling. Firstly, we segregate all explanatory variables and target variable and split it into a training testing part because we are not going to perform random over sampling on the testing data we are going to perform random over sampling only on training data okay so segregate the majority and minority class from the training data first of all we are concat this x train and y train because x train is all explanatory variables and y train is target variable the df underscore majority contains all the samples belonging to the majority class and df underscore minority contains all the data samples belonging to the minority class. Now we are going to use resample technique. It is a part of SQLN library. With the help of this resample technique, we upsample or performing random over sampling on the minority class examples. And we upsample the minority class examples up to the number of examples belonging to the majority class. That's why we provide n samples equal to length of df underscore majority. So let's run, run this cell. After that, we are going to concat the number of uh, df underscore minority of sample data and the original majority data. Let's run this cell. Now we are going to see the number of samples belonging to the each class after performing up sampling. So after performing up sampling, we have to like 55,642 samples belong to class 1 and same number of samples belonging to the class 0. Now we are going to segregate our uh, explanatory variables and our target variable. So x train contain all explanatory variables and y train contain target variables. So let's run this cell. Again we are going to normalize it with the help of min max scalar. With the help of min max scalar we transform our x train and x test into a normalized form so let's run this now again we are going to train our model with the help of this x train and y train that is already up sample data so let's run this cell this model training process will take some time so we'll meet after fifth epoch now our model training process is done on the up sample data we are going to take an inference on the testing data with the help of this nn dot predict so let's run this cell now we are going to evaluate our model with the help of measure underscore accuracy function so let's run this cell here you can see our model performing well on the minority class that is class one so after up sampling our model get after performing up sampling our model perform well on the minority class so you can see number of a misclassified examples in case of class 1 is also get reduced so as we compare 
the precision recall in f1 score for class 1 of the original data set and after performing random under sampling and over sampling let's compare it first of all so after uh, training our model on the original data set that is imbalanced data set the precision recall and f1 score is almost zero and after performing under sampling that is random under sampling our precision recall and f1 score for class 1 is 0.41 and recall is 0.92 and f1 score is 0.57 which is quite good in number after performing random over sampling the numbers are around same you can see the precision is 0.41 recall is 0.93 and f1 score is 0.57 you can see i thought the recall gate i uh, somehow improved with 0.1 only so after performing random over sampling and random under sampling you can see our model performing well or we will have a generalized model so we can use these techniques to tackle a problem of uh, data imbalance but i would suggest i have some notes for you first of all i have already told you just keep in mind perform balancing only on training part and also uh, there is one suggestion so uh, we have to perform trial and error on your uh, data set so you'll be able to understand which method is suitable for your data to perform balancing so there are another techniques like smote and adasin are uh, performing well on the uh, imbalanced data so we can balance our data with the help of smote and adasin you can also use this but in our case uh, random over sampling and random under sampling performing well so you can use any out of these methods we'll see smote and adasin in another video it's all about data imbalance and how to handle it there are some another techniques which quite useful to handle data imbalance we'll see these techniques in the next videos on the data imbalance thanks for watching if you enjoyed the video please subscribe my youtube channel your support means a lot for me now see you in the next exciting video